Hi once again. Let's try and put up two items today. We put uh, we put the early wall phone up, and I went up to the loft having a little look. Never know what you're going to find up there. Anyhow, a bell set turned up. Don't know where I got this from. Well, so I don't know where I got it from. It's obviously from a boot cell. And this is, um, as you can see, I haven't made a picture as I normally do, so we'll see what picture turns up we can use. This is bell set number 41 with a diagram. Similar type of box, wooden box, as the other phone I showed today. You've got, let's put some light on. Uh, you've got your um, ringer with the addition of some rectifiers. Now these are the old style rectifiers that used to be used within the GPO. I can just remember these without making myself feel too old. But yes, I can remember those. You've got your one microfarad capacitor and you've got the addition of a relay. This is a relay which has got one set of contacts, one set of make contacts. You'll notice the slug. That's that piece of metal at the armature end and the reason for that is to make the relay slow to operate. So when you apply a voltage to it, instead of it clicking in straight away, it gives you a little bit of time before it actually works. If the slug, these are called slugs, if they were on that end, the, the relay would be slow to release and slow to operate. But on this end, the armature, this is, this is the armature, that makes it slow to operate. Anyway, let's try and explain how these were used. I must admit I can remember shared service working when I joined uh, the post office. Well, anyhow, this bell set was used in conjunction with telephone 310 which was a 332 type in a nice baker like case and it was for shared service you had your button on the top which said call exchange and the idea of using this shared service was to cut down line plant so two customers or, or subscribers would work on one pair of wires all right there was no secrecy if someone was using if one party was using the phone the other party could lit could listening quite easily so there was no secrecy um, they're called shared service or party lines in England we only had them up to two. In America they go up to a few more. Anyhow, getting back to it, these were worked using an external earth lead. You'd have um, the earth wire which was normally on an earth spike rammed into the garden some, somewhere made it wet so that it would work well and the calling depending on what exchange what subscriber was calling you'd either loop the A leg to the earth for one party or the B leg to earth for the other party but you spoke 
through the normal A and B lines. Ringing on the other hand was done similar. One line to earth, the other line to earth, depending on which phone you wanted to work. Now, the problem was dialing out. When one party dialed out, they'd obviously dial out across the A and B lines and the, uh, what's the word, it would, the pulsing would cause the other person's bell to tinkle. You had bell tinkle, so as you dialed, you got bell tinkle. Likewise, if the other customer dialed out, so the other subscriber would also get the bell tinkle. Well, to overcome this, they introduce this bell set 41. And as you see, they have uh, two sets of rectifiers, which would, in one case, would operate to the first stream of ringing and they would energise the relay, slow to operate. Um, now then, getting a bit complicated. The first ringing of the cycle, the relay being slugged, did not respond to, to the dialing causing tinkling, which doesn't really make sense. Let me try and word it in my words. Um, the, the rectifiers were there and as it dialing it brought in the relay and which prevented because you, it the, the dialing or not the dialing the ringing yes the dialing put pulses on the lines if the relay kept was slow to operate then they would not operate during the dialing bit complicated we can now make it easy this was in the 1940s uh, the um, it was introduced in 1946 was this bell set and as you say it was quite a complicated affair more stuff to go wrong even I'm having difficulty to explain how it works. Now then, in 1947, the thermistor was invented. A very handy component, only very small. A lot of you know they're on the incorporated on a lot of phones now. Well, were little glass tube with a bead of carbon with two wires going into it. The idea was to stop the flow immediately so you had to warm it up hence the word therm to warm it up. Once it was warmed up it fully conducted so on dialing pulsing would not be long enough for the for mister to warm up so as these were connected in series with the bell they did not tinkle um, even phones well I say today the, um, the 706 from Israel which was a copy of our 706 that incorporates a thermistor automatically so you prevented bell tinkle right from the start but that was the idea of those heating up the carbon bead the carbon coefficient is reversed to most things I'm not going to try and get too technical but as it warms up then it becomes lower resistance in most cases as metals heat up the resistance increases yeah I've said it um, now let's have a little look 
Yeah, I think that's more or less explained it. Well, I would say that this um, earthing arrangement, the funny story I was told, God, I'm showing stuff years old. Um, as you called the exchange by pressing a button on the telephone 310, 332 type, you would obviously connect the earth to one side of the line A or B as I've said. Now what interesting is in one of these cases the earth was for some unknown reason not connected to a spike. It was connected to the electrical system of this particular building. Okay it would work that the building happened to be a prefab. Now those that don't know what prefabs are, they were the type of house or building that was popular during the, the war years and after. There was two designs, the English design and the American design. I do know that I had a cousin which lived in the American one and a very cosy, just a single floor with all, the, all your mods cons. With the electrics there was a range that if the earth received a stray voltage it would turn off the main supply to the house. So if you were watching TV and decided to make a phone call as soon as you press the button all the lights would go out. Anyhow I'll just put this in as a little a little story which was true it does go back a long time. Excuse me, that, that it just m makes me feel old. Anyhow, that's more or less all I've got to say with this. Um, it's surprising what's turned up in the loft. It looks like I've accrued a load of stuff, which if I was to put everything up on YouTube, <laughs> I just w I just would use up all what's it. There's your bells. So once again, thanks for watching. I've hoped I've explained it. I know my explanation's not always too good. But to get further information on this, have a little look on Google. Look up Bell Set 41. And the information there is very, very handy. So once again, many thanks. And I'll pop this up on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Thank you.